All right, so I want to welcome everyone tonight uh, to the 2024 lacrosse rules revisions update uh, with our state interpreter, Steve Hinchy. Uh, my name is Dan Scavone. I serve as the CIAC staff liaison to uh, boys lacrosse. And we do have some of our committee members on this call as coaches that serve on the boys lacrosse committee as well. And um, we're excited for another year of, of lacrosse mm -hmm. in Connecticut. And uh, this year, of course, we know we'll be operating with four divisions for the first time in the history of Connecticut. So we will have four championships at Sacred Heart University, um, one after the other, starting at 10 o'clock on mm -hmm. uh, in June. So welcome. And Steve, without further ado, uh, if you want to put your PowerPoint up, we can go over Good some enough. of the rules. And thank right. you for uh, your time tonight. Welcome, coaches. Uh, can't believe another year has passed so quickly, but here we go. Uh, I'm going to get this on board. Can we see that? If we yep. can see. That. Okay. So <clears throat> fortunately this year, uh, there were more clarifications and sort of reorganization of the rules than there are new rules. We will have that one, uh, the couple things that we'll talk about uh, regarding the helmet in a few minutes here. So let's go through the rule changes as they, and um, as they have been written for us. <clears throat> All right. Um, so in the first rule, what they've done is they've separated out the definition of a goalkeeper's cross and made its own article, Article 2. This clearly defines the goalkeeper's cross, separates it from what we'll call a field player's cross, so that we don't have any kind of um, – it was to eliminate confusion regarding depth of pocket and things that uh, are not necessarily applicable to the goalkeeper's cross. About the only thing that's applicable are the two-inch um, strings uh, that, that they're not allowed to have. But – um, their cross handle, uh, if you look, is 40 to 72. There's no break in terms of the size of the uh, the length of the stick itself. Head is 10 to 12. That's what makes it a goalkeeper's cross. And there's no restrictions on stringing or depth of, um, of stringing. <clears throat> um, and so it was separated. The um, rules 191A, C, E, and H, okay, this is to... Um, clarify and mandate that the equipment that is used by lacrosse players is manufactured for the game of lacrosse by the manufacturer and to the manufacturer's specifications as they meet the rule. And the idea is that the players are not to alter their equipment. They're to use, goal, uh, they're use uh, gloves that are manufactured for lacrosse and the manufacturer does not cut gloves, does not put holes in gloves. So there shouldn't be any holes or cut gloves. That's as an example. Um, the way the chin strap is is to be worn. Uh, the way gloves, arm pads, arm pads are to cover the arms. And um, the last thing they're talking about are numbers. Don't worry about that. That doesn't come until 2027. And what they're doing across most uh, sports is they just want to make sure that the number clearly contrasts with the color of the jersey so that officials film uh, can see what the number is of the player that's running. We'll get into the equipment again a little bit. Um, <clears throat> game personnel. Uh, this hasn't been an issue. The rules now specify that you're going to have multiple captains. It's not. It's something we've done for years. It just was never codified in the uh, in the rules. This has been cleaned up and multiple captains. Something we've been doing forever. Not to worry about that one. Um, there's some changes with the chief bench official. Uh, one of the uh, one of the and we only use the chief bench official in playoffs um, unless some conferences are using them for other reasons. But when there's a chief bench official, uh, one of his ABCs is always be counting. He's to be counting uh, the number of long crosses <clears throat> and, and players that are on the field. That's one of his duties. Uh, what has been eliminated is the timekeeping responsibilities for the chief bench official. Again, not to worry until playoffs. And that's really for officials more than it is for coaches. Uh, <clears throat> play of the game. All right. So if you remember, when the last two minutes of regulation play, we have an automatic stall put in if there's a, a team that's ahead by four goals. And you would always hear the mechanic, if they were outside the attack goal area, the official would say, get it in. And then once it was in the attack goal area, he would say, keep it in. Well, that was never really written into the rules or into the mechanics uh, that we used. 
And that's all this rule is doing, is it's saying that we're going to use the term, get it in when it's outside the attack goal area, and then keep it in when it's in the attack goal area. It's what we've been doing for years. It's now just been codified and clarified. Play the game. Um, so let's start with, uh, yep, we're starting with the face-off here. So just a clarification on the rule this year is that when you initiate the face-off, uh, the mechanics are all the same in terms of getting down, how the players are to set up, all that is the same. Just the added is the idea uh, that players shall not initiate a body check against their opponent. So in other words, when the whistle is blown, it's playing the ball. If there was contact that was made yeah. between the players, it's generally above the shoulder, and that's considered an illegal body check. It's one thing if there's incidental contact as they're going for the ball, but if we see the intent of one player initiating a body check, that will be an illegal body check penalty, one minute time serving. Um, the other clarification is when we uh, um, a player is clamping the ball or getting it on the back of his cross, um, He's to move it, rake it, or direct it within a step. We were saying immediately within a step. The immediately has been out. It's one step. I suppose if he stands there for five seconds and he's got the ball in the back of his cross and he hasn't taken a, a step, and certainly if he's standing and hasn't been checked, um, he's 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 doing a legal play. But it's within. He's got within a step if he hasn't got the ball uh, raked, directed, or in the proper position on the front of his cross. Um, that's going to be a violation, loss of ball. Um, <clears throat> play-ons, uh, this rule is talking about play-ons, um, I'm not play-ons, alternate possession, I'm sorry, alternate possession. And they're seeing in, in past years, there's some confusion about when alternate possession is used. In Connecticut, we're pretty, we're pretty good about how we use the rule. And of course, with officials, one of their goals is not to use alter, alternate possession. Uh, and that's usually used when officials cannot determine who should be possessing the ball. Um, most of this uh, regarding this rule is on the face off. And if we have any kind of situations after the face off, before the ball has crossed the restraining line, an inadvertent whistle, a ball goes out of bounds, player loses equipment, anything like that, we're going to reface the uh, the ball. So we're not going to get into this. It's alternate possession. We get the ball who, you know, uh, or which team knocked it out or whatever. If we can't determine it, it's going to be a reface when we're between the restraining lines. Once it's past the restraining lines, then it's a conventional field rule. And if we need to, we may need to use an alternate possession at that time. Um, <clears throat> This is just to clarify that at the end of a period, Rule 9293, uh, they just separated um, this component from Rule 492 and made it its own Article 493, that a goal will be allowed if the shot is released prior to the end of the period and it meets the criteria. Um, we have a shot whistle. Officials are going to watch the play. If the ball goes into the goal, it's a goal. If it hits the goalkeeper or the goal pipe and it goes into the goal, it's a goal. If it hits a defender and goes into the goal, I mean, if it hit, yeah, if it's a defender goes into the goal, uh, that's a goal. If it hits an attack player, it's no goal. If it hits the goalkeeper and then hits any other player and then goes into the goal, that's no goal. So it's Directly, it's really got to be directly into the goal, hitting the goalkeeper the goal, uh, or the goal pipe. So this is the article. It's the same way we've been enforcing it. There's no change in the enforcement. I just wanted to clarify it. And they just moved it in its, into its own section. Um, 492 is when a goal is not allowed. 493 is saying how this would be allowed on a shot after a whistle. Um, <clears throat> 422 uh, won the penalty. This is... Um, uh we were calling we are in the past we're calling this a delay of game this is actually going to be called an illegal procedure it was just a, a clarification the rule has not changed um i'm sorry the, uh 422 i just wanted to get grab the one for this is this is for a player not yielding 
Okay, when we uh, we are looking for quick restarts in most situations, there will be situations where we have what's called a controlled restart. And that's the official controlling everything to make sure all players are where they're supposed to be before they blow the whistle. If a defendant, the defender against the ball carrier is not within five yards when a we have a quick restart or even when we have a controlled restart, um, if he does not yield and, and establish five yards with the ball carrier, we used to call that delay a game, which is now just going to be called a legal procedure. It's the same penalty. It's just going to be identified as illegal procedure for scorekeeping purposes. No change in the rule or how we're calling it. <clears throat> okay. Um, we can get into, we'll get into a little more detail about this, but when a helmet comes off, play stops. That's it. Okay. When a helmet comes off, the play stops. And the player is going to leave the field and he must stay off the field. There must be a restart of play and then a whistle to kill play. And then that player is allowed to come back onto the field. So a player who loses his helmet leaves the field and he has to wait for a start, time to pass, a whistle, and then he can come back on the field. Unlike college, college has penalties for losing the helmet. The purpose this year of the rule for federation is that we want the players to be properly equipped and to wear their helmets correctly. And we're hoping that this ruling, the way we're going to do it this year, will establish that so that players will be compliant. And if players, if it turns out statistically players are not going to be compliant, then next year penalties will be initiated, time serving penalties. So this year, it's simply we stop play, helmet goes back on, the team that had the ball keeps the ball. If the ball was loose, then we're going to need to use alternate possession. If there was a shot that was taken before the helmet was lost, we're treating that the same way as the end of the period. We will allow the shot to go, and if a goal scores, the goal scores. Okay. But the shot has to have taken place before the piece of equipment is lost. Helmet lost through an illegal contact, same, same thing, player goes off. Helmet lost through an illegal contact, there's an illegal contact and the player loses his helmet. The player losing his helmet still goes off the field. The player with the illegal con a contact is assessed a penalty, the appropriate penalty, and if it's time serving, he's off the field. But the bottom line is helmet off, players off, and doesn't come back until time has elapsed. You cannot buy it with a timeout. If it happens at the end of a period, helmet comes off as the period ends, that player cannot start the next period because there has not been time elapsed. Um, if you have questions later, we can go over that, okay? But that's the helmet rule. It is not, there's no penalty except for the player leaving the field. And we then allow a player to, re, uh, to replace him. You will have up to 20 seconds to get a player on. If teams want to uh, substitute other players, they can. They'll have up to 20 seconds to substitute players. That's the only time we'll allow that. All right. Fouls. So in years past, um, we've had the head neck uh, trying to protect players with the head and neck uh, contact. And so for the past couple of years, any head and neck contact started at a two-minute non-releasable penalty. But we had the iffy area, and the iffy area is if we had a contact that started below the shoulders but ended up above the shoulders, either from the back or from the front, and ends up in the neck or head, um, we were required to call a two-minute penalty. What they've done is they've taken a, a kind of a lead from the from the college game, and now we have a one-minute non-releasable penalty. It used to be called, it was sort of called an indirect hit. In other words, the check would start, could be a cross check or a body check, starts below the shoulders and ends up in the neck or the head area. That will be called as a penalty. It's an indirect hit because you rode up, and that would be a one-minute non-releasable penalty. If the, if the check was directly to the head, directly to the neck, that will be a two-minute penalty, a, a minimum two-minute penalty. And if it was considered flagrant, it could be a three-minute penalty or it could be an ejection. 
So if we start below the shoulders and ride up, it's going to be a one minute non-releasable penalty. Anything that is at the head and neck is starts at a two minute, can be a three minute, and it can be a an ejection from the game. So that uh, there was a reluctance by officials to uh, to kind of call these two minute fouls. So now it gives the officials um, the opportunity to certainly penalize and penalize in a uh, a more fair manner. Um, five six player may not use equipment that does not conform to specifications. That goes back to rule one about equipment. Equipment is manufactured for the game of lacrosse, shoulder pads for the game of lacrosse, arm pads for the game of lacrosse, helmet for the game of lacrosse, a cross for the game of lacrosse. Um, use of this illegal equipment is going to be a non-releasable penalty. Uh, they've eliminated the fingers and the palms and the hands must be completely covered. All that stuff about cutting, altering the equipment, because that's not how the manufacturer has made the equipment. If it is altered, in any way, any manner, it is a non-releasable penalty um, for equipment. The exception is mouth guards. Mouth guards is a technical foul. Mouth guard rule is still there. Officials have been um, essentially led and warned about uh, enforcing mouth guard uh, rules as well as the rest of the equipment. So let's have our players properly equipped this year. Um, changes to technical fouls. Uh, this is just clarification of language. Um, the team foul, if he does not have possession of the ball because it's either loose or the offending team uh, has possession, uh, the ball is going to be awarded to the team that was fouled. Okay. Um, this is just kind of a clarification <clears throat> of the rule. All right. Um, we talk about the... Uh, Defensive player entering the crease area, 664. Um, we're calling it, we call this a conduct foul for the first violation, and then we call it an unsportsmanlike conduct for the second violation. It's a team violation, not a player violation. Okay. No defensive player other than a properly equipped goalkeeper, I'll get back to that, can enter the player's own crease with the perceived intent to block a shot or act as the goalkeeper. Okay, this year we are using the term field player and goalkeeper, um, um, goalkeeper and field player. If a goalkeeper is outside the crease, he is now considered a field player in everything and every, every manner except for equipment. The only equipment is the uh, goalkeeper doesn't have to wear shoulder pads or arm pads. So that's the only thing that he is. That's an exception to him being a field player. And uh, that is so that if anything happens in terms of loss of equipment by a goalkeeper who is out of the crease, if you remember, we had to have an immediate whistle in past years. We no longer have to do that. Uh, we will have we will treat a lost piece of equipment of a goalkeeper who's out of the crease the same way we would any other field player. Now, we also say properly equipped goalkeeper. If a goalkeeper loses his equipment and then goes back into the crease, trying uh, acting as a goalkeeper, but he's not properly equipped. In other words, he doesn't have a, a goalkeeper's cross. That's a violation, falls under the same category. And that is the rule changes. And we'll talk about our points of emphasis um, and uh, the rationale behind that. Okay, cross prohibitions. Officials have been instructed this year that uh, to be more critical in the measuring of lacrosse, the cross. Um, the way crosses are being designed, the side walls are now, um, they're not, th not so much thicker, but from top to bottom, there's a bigger dimension to them. So that more of the ball is now hidden in the wall of the cross. And so if players are now trying to gain an advantage by altering their cross so it holds the ball more, or holds it better. Um, our rule now for officials is it comes out clean. If there's any hesitation, it's an illegal cross. The same for a deep pocket. Part of the problem now is that these walls, because of their dimension, how, how wide they are top to bottom, uh, it's harder to see the ball 
and whether it is below, you know, whether you have a deep pocket. So again, if there's any slight doubt, it's going to be an illegal cross. And all, all illegal crosses are two minutes locked in penalties. All crosses can be corrected and come back into the game. So if it's an illegal length, you put the proper length on, you can bring the cross back in. If it's deep pocket, if the ball's not coming out, any of those, they're all two-minute locked-in penalties. And uh, they, if the, if the cross is fixed, they can bring it back into the game. So we are going to be more critical um, on the cross check. If there's hesitation of the ball coming out in any manner, it is going to be a two-minute um, two illegal cross. Eye shade. The interesting thing about eye shade is this uh, rule change is is across all sports uh, where eye shade may be appropriate. And this actually came from athletic directors and coaches, did not come from officials, but the officials are going to enforce the rules. The rule. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so eye shade, it's clearly defined in the book. It's under the eye socket, under the eye socket, and it doesn't go past the cheek. It is one stroke. That's the way it's going to be. Coaches, you're going to certify that your players are properly equipped. Eye shade is not being used for protection. Eye shade is being used as war paint. And mm -hmm. we're not allowing that in, in this game. And, and uh, National Federation is not allowing it in any of their games. So let's get the eye shade correct. Uh, officials are going to try to be aware. If you have a question, ask the official to make a judgment for you. We'll We'll do that. But if we see it on the field, we may chase them off first, but we're gonna we're definitely gonna penalize. So let's get the eye shade correct. One streak stroke and it's under the eye, uh, next um inside the uh the cheekbone. Properly worn equipment. We've gone over that twice now as far as the equipment being properly worn. Uh, the interesting fact about the helmet is when the helmet is properly worn, it's not gonna come off. When it's not properly worn, then it could possibly come off. So when the chin strap is buckled, four-point chin strap, and it's under the chin, when it's tightened so that it's un it's under the chin, the helmet is not going to come off unless the helmet clearly breaks. Other equipment, the arm pads, the chest protectors, neck guards for the goalkeepers, shoulder pads, all that equipment, protective cup, all those are mandated. They're all manufactured, you know, for the game of lacrosse. Let me see protective cup, but um, any alterations are going to be illegal. So let's have our players properly equipped. Checks involving the head and neck. Again, this is a safety issue that we want to continue. Uh, we've clarified the rule to give a one minute for a write-up kind of a check, and, um, and that's the way that will be called by our officials this year. There is another uh, clarification um, that came in. I don't know why it didn't appear in our uh, PowerPoint here. Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper uh, who has a ball in his cross standing in his crease, and he puts the ball back into the goal area. In other words, it's in possession. It crosses the goal line, and he drops the ball. There was always confusion whether this was a goal, no goal. It is a no goal, Okay. If the goalkeeper has the ball in possession and drops it in into the goal, it is not a loose ball that has crossed the goal line, so it is no goal, but the ball is awarded to the attacking team. You may look in the rule book, and I'm sorry I don't have that reference right in front of me, but there is a um, – there's a situation, and the situation unfortunately gave the <laughs> says it gives the ball back to the the same team. It is not. It goes back. To, it goes to the attacking team, and it goes lateral to the goal. Um, that was a clarification that needed to be made, um, and that came down a a, a a few weeks ago. Let's see. So that is all I have. Those are the rule changes. If you have questions, particularly about uh, the equipment, the helmet. Um, whatever, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them now. If not, uh, you can contact me at any time during the season. As far as a rule interpretation, uh, contact uh, your respective board in terms of the mechanics um, interpretation so that the training official, uh, the official in charge of training can talk to you about uh, mechanic issues. My role now is uh, interpret is interpreter of um, ultimate interpreter for Connecticut of the National Federation rules. Thank you, Dan. Steve, Steve there was one question from Kenny McCarthy on yes on, 
in the chat and it was uh concerning the eye shade um okay it just uh i don't know if you can see it what? um eye shade rule has not been applied during state championship games in the past is this year different uh, National Federation rules apply in championships. They're supposed to. I, that, that was uh, that was never the intent last year. Okay, then uh, another question from Keith Blum. Does the color of the player's glove need to match uniform colors? Uh, the book is, is, uh, indicates that except for goalkeepers who may have a special, you know, there's special goalkeeping gloves, uh, that the colors may be limited. Teams should uh, the teams essentially should have the same um, color gloves. Okay. And I believe that is it. So okay. No wait. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, yes. That rule. I asked Ralph Baldelli that question because I know that there was an issue um, in the Ohio State game last year. Um, in college and college specifically has the rule that every player must have the same colored gloves for our rules. It does not state that. I'm looking that up as we talk right now, just a sec here. I, I believe it. Ha I think we have the same helmets, like sh jerseys, shorts, um, maybe even undershirts, but gloves were not. Um, but it is a college rule. I'm sorry. I, uh, uh, I I will stand corrected on that. Uh, protective gloves. It just says protective gloves designed for lacrosse. Okay. Okay. Great. So yeah, they formally, can be any color. It, I will say it was it, it was it, there was a rule. Okay. It, it did have color um, designated about six years ago, and I, it looks like that's been taken out. Um, so I apologize. That helmets need to be the same. Jerseys obviously the same. Um, and we uh, we talk about uniform shorts being the same as well, and then right. consistency with undergarments, consistency with um, um, like sweats and stuff like that. Okay, there there right. is consistency as far as the equipment colors there. Gloves uh, just does design. Yep. Great. I, I got a, actually another question. Can you remind us what the face off line that needs to be um, at the face off X? The okay. dimensions of yeah, it's just it's got to be a box basically. Okay, <laughs> so um, let me just I'll I'll pull it out so I can uh, read it to you. Just a second. So we want a um, we want a rectangle uh, at the center line. The other thing, guys, is make sure that you um, you have the center line goes across the field. If you need to use like ghost lines to go through a logo or something, that's acceptable. But we need to have a consistent line that's going through. Um, let's see. Can you outline like a white line? Yeah, that's what we call a ghost line. Okay. okay. In other words, it doesn't have to be a solid line. But if you got the external part of the line going through, you'll be in 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 good shape. Okay. Uh, it's got to be a rectangle, four inches by four inches, I believe. Four inches by four inches. Yeah. Okay, that's what you needed. Thank you very yep. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I I have a quick question as well. Um, I uh, had a had a scrimmage yesterday, and one of the officials um, had said that there's a, a new rule that, or a, a rule, I, whatever it was, that they're they're trying to take a any big hit out of the game completely. So he had said that regardless of whether or not the hit is clean, meaning it's not to the head or neck, it's in the front of the body, um, and regardless of whether or not the player has possession, that it's a one minute non releasable penalty. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know about that, um, but I just wanted to clarify that because we actually sure. had that call in the game. Okay, so the term that we have in uh, high school uh, national federation is the defenseless player. OK, so the defenseless player is one who's got his back to the person who's going and he turns around and he's immediately checked. OK, he hasn't got a time. He hasn't. He does not have time to defend himself or, or buffer himself. So that's what we're talking about as far as is a hard hit. If we've got a player that's running, you know, he's 10 yards like a freight train running in. That could be yeah. called necessary roughness. 
Okay. I get that. I'm, I'm just saying like a man ball within five yards of the ball. Um, the, I, you, well, I, the judgment of the official. Okay. We don't, there, there's, there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no yeah, rule that outlaws a, a rugged check as long as it's below the shoulders, above the waist, as long as the player is not in a crouched position. If a player is yeah. in a crouched position, say in the face off, you can't be checking him. If a player looks like he's defenseless and it was a more aggressive check than it needed to be, excuse me, the official has can call unnecessary roughness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the other, you know, the buddy pass, uh, the old buddy pass, right, right, right. In the air, and he turns around. That's the defenseless player. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And then uh, last thing, I, I, mean, I had this issue last year, and I know you just went over it, and I'm sure you went over it with the officials as well. Um, I just want to confirm that officials are all on the same page as far as illegal sticks. I had last year uh, opponent uh, uh, opponent scored, called a stick check because it was very clear that the back the pocket was too deep. Goal was allowed, three minute non releasable penalty for that player, and then the very next game, uh, illegal stick check at uh, that the quarter, and it was a one minute non releasable penalty. So, so I just want. I just wanted to make sure situations they were wrong last year yeah. because it's a two yeah. minute foul. And if it's an if illegal cross scores a goal, it's no goal. Right. There right. shouldn't be a goal scored. Um, sorry, that happened. I will uh, notify both boards to just make a clarification uh, point of emphasis for you on that. Coach. Very good. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, Steve. I think that uh, that does about it for tonight. Uh, okay. So th Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And um, all you coaches out there, have a great year. And hopefully we get some better weather as we get to uh, into next week anyway. Um, but have a good start. And um, we'll see you all in another time. Thank you.